Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My name is Aziza Munir, and uh, we are here for lecture number two of quantitative business analysis, which is probability. Just to give you a glimpse of last lecture, that what we have done in the previous one, we have discussed that why we have um, why we need to study quantitative business analysis. What is the need and importance of quantitative business analysis? What is actually a model? We have described that model is an iconic representation of, uh, or it's a representation of the actual situation, um, which is the practical situation, but not actually the practical situation. We are taking the simulation of it. Why we need to develop a model? What is the purpose of developing a model? And why? Uh, what basic um, um, requirements we used to take for uh, developing a model? Then we have to discuss that what that when we have discussed that what are, were the types of models, and we have discussed model with reference to the uh, importance of model, mathematical model, and we discussed the flow chart, the transformational flow chart, uh, so that we can analyze that what is the relationship of controllable and uncontrollable factors uh, towards the development of a model and uh, how it affects the output. Now today. We'll be talking about probability, a very, very, very interesting field of statistics and uh, no doubt a very sound in application towards business studies as well. In this chapter, we'll be talking about that what are the experiments and uh, a sample space. We refer to the sets theory, we refer, refer to some mathematical um, analysis of uh, creating experiments and um, uh, identifying the sample space. Then we'll be talking about assigning probabilities to experimental outcomes. What actually um, the methodologies and how many methods are there to assign various types of methodology uh, probabilities to the experimental outcomes. These are the classical method, relative frequency method, and subjective method. We are taking three methods in consideration of assigning probabilities to experimental outcomes. Then we'll be talking about event and their probabilities. What is actually an event and uh, how we describe the event with reference to its probability. Then we'll be defining some basic relationships of probability in terms of complement of an additive law, conditional probability, multiplicative law, and then analyze the summary. Um, I think that we will not be completing the multiplicative law and conditional probability in this lecture co uh, completely, but the next lecture, lecture number three, will be completely exhaustive with uh, conditional probability and multiplicative law. But no doubt we'll be touching in detail the additive law, which is um, uh, generated through the basic relations of probability. What is probability? Now, this is the word we use to... to um, illustrate this is the word we used to mention in our daily language in our daily life a lot of times and once we talk about the business and once we talk about the business environment we discuss we talk about probability lots of and lots of times what actually the probability stands for this is usually considered that something which is uh, not sure to happen something which lacks certainty uh, usually comes in the domain of probability. No doubt, this is accurate. But what Stats used to say is that um, uh, probability is something uh, which is which is about to happen in future, but we are not sure of. We are not. Um, we cannot present the surety that this particular um, event will happen or not. Now, probability. Why probability was required? Why we need to discuss probability? And what is the importance of probability? And what is the domain of probability? Let's have a look. Now, <coughs> in business decisions, uh, we often uh, realize the uncertainties, like what are the chances that sales will decrease if we increase profit? A very, very regular statement which we encounter in the business environment: that what are the chances that sales will decrease when we uh, increase the price. This is not the profit, this is the price. If um, price increase in any product, then what will the sales effect be? It's a regular concern. Hai. Here we use the word chances. Keep this in mind. What is the likelihood that a new assembly method will increase productivity? That when we apply new machinery, new assembly line, new methodology, production ke upar apply karte hai, productivity methods, ko change karte hai, so, what will happen? 
हमारी ओवरऑल प्रोडक्टिविटी के ऊपर अगेन वर्ड टू मैंशन वर्ड टू रिमेम्बर इज लाइकलीहुड देन हाउ लाइकली इट इज दैट प्रोजेक्ट विल बी कम्प्लीटेड इन टाइम कि प्रोजेक्ट जो है वो एक इन टाइम खत्म होगा या नहीं होगा वी आर नॉट श्योर ऑफ दैट अगेन लाइकली इज द वर्ड विच इज विच इज विच नीड टू बी रिमेम्बर वॉट आर दर्ड्स इन फेवर ऑफ अ न्यू इन्वेस्टमेंट बींग प्रॉफिटेबल अगर हम एक नए प्रोजेक्ट में इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हैं तो कितने चांसेस हैं या हाउ मेनी आर्ट्स आर देयर दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी फ्रूटफुल विल जनरेट प्रॉफिट और नॉट नाउ इफ यू कम्बाइन द वर्ड्स चांसेस लाइकलीहुड लाइकली एंड आर्ट्स दिस आर दिस विल गिव्स अस दिस इज नॉट प्रॉफिट दिस इज प्राइस दैट वॉट इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ सेल्स वेन वी इंक्रीज द प्राइस ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट so chances likelihood likely odds these are the words which describes the uncertainty of a particular event a particular event if you if you're making a kind of an arrangement but you're not sure of that so we are uncertain about it and if you are uncertain about something we are actually talking about probability now what does the definition states probability is a numerical measure of the likelihood that an event will occur Thus, probabilities could be used as measure of degree of uncertainty that an event will occur. एक event होगा in future successfully, positively या नहीं होगा. There must be two outcomes. या तो कोई काम होगा या कोई काम नहीं होगा. या अगर होगा तो 50% complete होगा, 80% complete होगा, 90% complete होगा. या उसमें कोई degree of uncertainty मौजूद होगी. But when we talk about uncertainty, we talk about we refer to the word probability and we assign numerical measures to this likelihood ke ek chance occur hota hai ya nahi hota hai isko agar hum uh, assign kar dein kuch numerical numbers to actually hum just um, continuum mein baat kar rahe hain this continuum is related to probability and not nothing that difficult nothing that um, um, new actually but this is something which is the numerical representation of uncertainty numerical representation of something which is not happened right now and how and when it will going to happen we are assigning some numbers to that and this becomes probability probability provide a way to one measure two express and third analyze the uncertainty associated with future events now in uh, probability we talk about that how we will be measuring uh, the uh, events how we will be expressing the events which are about to undertake in future and how we will be analyzing the level of uncertainty in the event which is about to happen in future so these three areas are the domain of probability measuring expressing and analysis of uh, the uncertainties of the events which are about to happen in future probability values are always assigned on a scale from 0 to 1 now the range which we have assigned to probability is 0 uh, uh, minimum and 1 the maximum if any um, result which is any numerical result of probability comes in the form of 0 or which is uh, nearby 0 is related to um, or it it indicates that the certain event has a very little chance to occur meaning that it is unlikely to occur and if it indicates a value around 1 that is 0.99 0.98 sometimes 0.89 uh, when we round that value it becomes 0.9 or point or 1 exactly this shows that um, it, the likelihood of an event to occur is too much right so other probabilities within the range if the if the value comes uh, which is near to 0 this is uh, unlikelihood and if the value comes and strikes uh, the the value around 1 this will gives you or this this, this describes that a event will about to happen successfully and between 0 to 1 there are multiple degrees we in maths used to say ke 0 aur 1 ke darmiyan mein beshumar values hoti hain uncountable unlimited number of values exist and these unlimited values describes the degree of relationship that whether the event will happen or not right if we take the 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 median 0.5 is the median or 0.5 is the average that even will um, uh, there there are 50% margin there are 50% percent chances that an event will occur and 50% chances that event will not occur 
So the probability of 1 over 2 or 50 percent or 0 0.50 describes the median or mean of uh, the likelihood. So uh, apart from these three values 0, uh, 0.5 and 1 there exist unlimited number of values which again describe multiple kinds of uncertainties, multiple kinds of degrees of uncertainties of an event which is about to occur in the future. So probability basically, the value of probability will never be exceeded from 1 or it will never be negative, meaning less than 0. Experiment. What is an experiment? And what are the sample spaces? So far we talk about what is probability and what is the uh, range of probability which is existing um, which describes the right relationship. Now experiment is a process that generate well-defined outcomes. An activity regularly, if we, if we define experiment in, a, in the language of a layman, an experiment is actually an activity which is performed for the purpose of generating an outcome, an outcome. So one experiment will be generating one outcome, undoubtedly. So one and only one experimental outcome will occur. Like, for example, if you're tossing a coin, two outcomes are likely to happen. Whether head will appear or tail will be shown. When we are tossing a coin, it's not possible that head and tail appear on simultaneously. Whether head will appear or tail will be shown. So two possible outcomes of tossing a coin. Rolling a dice. When we are rolling a dice, a dice is having four facets, right? Six facets. And every, uh, with every facet, we, are, we have assigned with a numeric number. That is one, two, three, four, or five, or six. So when we are rolling a dice, again, the output can be only one. That either one appears, or two appears, or three appears, or later four appears, or five or six appears. It's never be a case, it's, it's, it can never happen that while rolling a dice, we are, um, uh, we are provided with two outcomes. No, one outcome. One experiment, tossing a coin, one output, head or tail. One experiment, rolling a dice, one outcome, either of the values from one to six. Similarly, if you're playing cricket, again, multiple likelihoods, whether you'll be winning the game, or you will be losing the game, or you will be having a tie, right? That whether neither loss nor win. So uh, a kind of situation which is a tie, meaning both the parties are given with an equal um, weightage. So again, if any, an experiment is occurred, that is playing a game, playing a cricket game, uh, this is an experiment which is occurred, or this is an activity which is occurred, and this activity is generating one response, winning or losing or having a tie, not combined. Then another type of experiment is impact of quality control output. That if you are conducting um, a quality control examination or if you are assigned with any kind of task and you are about to describe that which type of uh, quality is lying in this um, um, uh, act or in this activity or in this particular project, what is the level of quality? So it will either be good or defective. It is either be up to the mark or not up to the mark. If not up to the mark, then certain measures can be adopted to uh, place the, um, uh, to make the quality up to the mark, right? But if uh, it, is, it is good and this is undoubtedly fine, then there is no need to repeat the experiment again. But again, the experiment has generated one outcome. Another type of experiment, look at uh, the slide. This is attending a test. That if you're attending a test, two outcomes are possibly there. Whether, whether you clear it or you cannot clear it. So passing and failing are two uh, possible outcomes of uh, attending a test. Then again, applying for a job. Another activity, another experiment has been done which is more subjective in nature and multiple outcomes can be uh, taken but at a time one outcome will be shown that when you're applying for a job either you're selected for that job 
or you will be you will not be selected for that job or you will be selected on conditional basis so three uh, outcomes might be there but out of which only one is presented so either head will appear or any numeric number on the dice will appear or whether you win a game, game or lose a game or you get a tie or you get effective uh, defective um, outcomes or good outcomes from uh, the quality control uh, experiment or you will be either pass or fail from any, any one particular test or you will be either accepted declined or hired on conditional basis so in all these six kinds of experiments if you just look at it you will be um, given with only one outcome and that one outcome actually shows that this is an experiment in nature how we can assign probabilities to these experiments now we have two laws basically that the probability of any event will lie between 0 and 1 that probability of an event will be greater than or equal to 0 probability of an event will be greater than or equal to 0 or it will be less than or equals to 1 meaning it will lie between 0 to 1 as simple as that as that that uh, when you just look at the um, uh, when you just assign um, uh, when you could just conduct an event and you analyze the result the result will either uh, be 0 or 1 or between it so probability of any event will lie between 0 and 1 second rule is that when we sum up all the probabilities this sign so shows summation when you uh, get a total of when you get uh, the sum of all probabilities this will generate 1 this will be equals to 1 this will never be exceed 1 meaning if during an event multiple outcomes have been taken that um, uh, um, an event requires tossing a dice um, or rolling a uh, rolling a dice or tossing a coin or any other uh, activity when generate multiple outcomes when you combine them the answer should be equal to 1 or the sum of all probabilities within an event will generate 1 in uh, total or you can say that when you combine the probability of event 1 with that of event 2 with that of event 3 so on up till event n infinite infinite number of events when you combine the probabilities probability of event 1 plus probability of event 2 plus probability of event 3 so on till probability of event n will generate the outcome which is equals to 1 because probability can never be exceeded from 1 of course some of all probabilities will be non-negative as well this will never generate a negative result because the probability of any event from the one from 1 to n will never generate any value which is a negative if it is coming in negative then you have to recheck that where actually the sign is going because it's not possible that uh, and the, the outcome of any event becomes negative whether head will appear or tail will appear so they all generate one outcome it can never be a case that nothing will be generated when you're rolling when you're tossing a coin so that is uh, probability of an experiment sample space the sample space describes the maximum limit or the maximum area from which a probability could occur. Now what is the maximum area? The complete domain or the overall uh, margin in which the possible outcome may generate result is the sample space. It indicates the maximum area where probability could occur. Now consider coin tossing. The possible outcomes will either be head or tail similarly in rolling a dice it will either be of 1 2 3 4 5 or 6 therefore sample space is the domain of probability occurrence that uh, in which domain the probability will be occurring now s describes the sample space sample space is equals to head or tail meaning 
this area within the uh, medium brackets describes the possible outcomes of any event all the possible uh, outcomes of any event when condensed in braces are can uh, describe actually describes the sample space that the entire margin or the entire domain in which the probability might lie is actually known as sample space i repeat that when you are conducting any experiment whatever is uh, what, whatever is the outcome will lie in a given range now what actually is the given range describes in the sample space ke jab bhi aap ek event uh, conduct karte ho jab bhi aap ek experiment conduct karte ho to us experiment ka jo bhi outcome hai wo ek margin mein aur ek domain mein lie karega us domain se bahar nahi niklega ye nahi ho sakta ki agar aapne ek dice ko roll kiya hai to aapke paas koi outcome na aaye जो भी नंबर्स हमने उस डाइस के ऊपर मेंशन किए हुए उनमें से कोई ना कोई एक ही अपीयर होगा लेकिन एट मैक्सिमम कितने नंबर्स अपीयर हो सकते हैं या कौन कौन से आउटकम्स हो सकते हैं या एक नंबर अपीयर होगा या टू विल अपीयर या थ्री विल अपीयर और थ्री फोर विल अपीयर और फाइव विल अपीयर और सिक्स विल अपीयर राइट देर वॉन्ट बी एनी अदर ऑप्शन बिकॉज अ डाइस इज हैविंग सिक्स फेसिट्स any of the six face it will appear the probability is of appearing one or two or three or four is one over six what is this we will we'll discuss it later but actually uh, how many uh, in which range the outcome can come up is from the range of one to six it's not possible that when you're rolling a dice seven eight or zero will appear or any other number Uh, from one to other than one to six will appear. It is not possible. It is simply not possible. So, what is possibly be there at maximum describes sample space. Then probabilities of experiments. If we are not um, rolling one um, coin, but we are tossing. If we are we are not rolling one dice, but we are rolling two dice. Or if we are not um, um, tossing one coin. we are tossing two coins now just in an extension with one coin tossing either head or tail will appear but if there are two coins not one then there might be a case that on one coin head appears on the other coin tail appears or there might be a case that on both the coins head appears or the third outcome there might be a case that um tail appears to both the coins or there might be a case to, to that in coin 1 we got tail and in coin 2 we got head so possibly we talk about four outcomes while tossing a coin we have four outcomes while tossing one coin two possibilities of um appearance two possibilities of an event to occur is or either head will appear or tail will appear but if we are tossing two coins four outcomes will be there that either head appears or tail appears or head appears or tail appears so two coins with one coin you are having two outcomes with one coin you are having two outcomes with another coin you are having two outcomes so 2 cross 2 gives you four outcomes which is actually the sample space so this is as simple as that now just try it and you'll be amazed similarly a little complex but very very interesting that when you are rolling two dice one dice generate six outcomes one either of 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 possibly six sample space were there if you are rolling one dice another dice joined you and the similar outcomes will be there for that dice as well outcomes will become 6 cross 6 which is equals to 36 
and these outcomes are mentioned. There may be a case that on the first eye one appears, on the second eye again one appears. On the first eye one appears, on the second eye two appears. On the first eye one appear, on the second eye three appears and so on and so forth. Now this entire set of 36 outcomes represents the maximum domain of probability to occur and hence known as sample space. Very simple that if you are rolling two dice, one dice will, having, will be having six outcomes and another dice will definitely be having six outcomes. So in totality you will be having 36 outcomes while conducting this experiment. Right? So the entire set of sample space will describe 36 outcomes and each outcome will be having an equal chance of being occurred in the sample space. Now when we um, talk about experimentations and sample space and assigning probabilities to experiments, I hope so far you have um, uh, you got clear with the concepts of probability and you have clear with the concepts of um, uh, experiment and sample space. Now we'll be talking about that when you're assigning probabilities to experiments, how many methods are there? There exist three methods. For what? For assigning probabilities to uh, experiments. One method is the classical method. Second is the relative frequency method and third is the subjective method. Starting from the classical method. The classical method was developed originally to analyze gambling probabilities where assumption of equally likely outcomes often is reasonable. Now uh, this is a very very old kind of uh, concept or very um, uh, uh, you can say a kind of concept which was the very first um, result of or the very first meaning of probability is the classical method of assigning probabilities to any outcome. That an event will um, likely to, uh, to happen, I mean an event, an event will uh, likely to occur. This is a kind of um, analysis which was conducted initially in gambling practices. Now consider similar example of tossing a coin where chances of getting head or appearing tail is equally likely as equally likely is a term is again a statistical term equally likely meaning that um, when we are uh, roll when we are tossing a coin the chances of uh, appearing head are just equivalent to the chances of appearing a tail meaning that we are not giving separate weightage to both the occurrence to both the events occurrence Meaning, we are not assigning 0.75 weightage that head will appear or we are not thinking that 0.65 weightage is assigned to or any other weighting weightage is assigned to um, appearance of a tail, right? So therefore, we are actually talking about, therefore, we are actually giving an equal weightage to both the outcomes which might be there as a result of an event occurrence. Um, as uh, the outcomes may either be head or tail with equal chance of appearance, then we can say that probabilities to get head as outcome is 0 0.50 or 1 by 2 and similar is with tail appearance that is probability of a head to be appeared in an outcome is 1 over 2 or 0 0.5. And probability that tail will appear is again 1 over 2 or 0 0.5. Meaning 50% weightage is given to the appearance of head while tossing a coin and 50% weightage is assigned to tail while tossing a coin. Similarly, if we uh, extend the similar example to uh, rolling a dice, now what possible outcomes might be there? We have analyzed that probability that one will appear if we are uh, tossing if you are if you are rolling a dice how much prob probability is there that one will appear 1 over 6 
total number of events which in the sample space we have described there are six and out of which one probability is given that um, one will appear. Similarly, probability that two will appear is again one over six. So on probability of six that six will appear is again one over six. Now when you combine all these probabilities as we have discussed uh, that the law of probability that is that that sum of all the probabilities should be equal to one. In this case sum of all the probabilities that probability of head will appear plus probability that tail will appear is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 which is equals to 1. Right? Similarly, when we talk about the probabilities of um, um, rolling a sum of probabilities of rolling a dice, probability that 1 appear plus probability that 2 appear plus probability that 3 appear plus so on probability that 6 appear should be equals to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 so on plus 1 over 6 should be equals to 6 over 6 which is equals to 1. Sum of all probabilities of an event is equals to 1. Ye jo probability of A 1 this is event 1 as we have discussed in the previous slide this is event 1 probability that 2 appears second event probability that 3 appears while rolling a dice third event total number of events which can occur in this particular experiment are 6 because sample space is 6 right so in totality the classical method describes a very very simple methodology a very simple attitude that if an event is occurred then what is the chances of conducting of what is the chances that uh, an event will appear um, possible outcome that is presented in front of you second but comparatively um, uh, a very very important uh, area of um, assigning probabilities is relative frequency method. Now in relative frequency method um, this is an extension of classical method. Now classical method is having uh, a limitation. The limitation is that uh, um, when you are um, not conducting any experiment which is related to a specific set of outcomes meaning if you're um, if you're not rolling a dice or if you're not rolling multiple dice or if you're not tossing a coin or if you're not tossing multiple coins in which you can assume any set of um, um, outcomes you cannot apply classical um, method as it was mentioned in the classical method that this was the method which was adopted um, by the early times in the for the for the gambling purpose so in the gambling purpose, uh, when you are predicting something or when you are uh, identifying the probability of something, so you are very, very restrictive in the outcomes. That whether this will happen or this will happen. Or out of these outcomes, any one particular um, um, incident will occur. So you have certain set of outcomes on the basis of which you will be selecting one. So that is an area, that is something which gives you a limitation right but if limitation is not there then what to do when you're talking about comparatively more practical in nature or when you are comparatively giving a kind of um, 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 yes, when you're conducting a kind of study which is more extensive in nature then what to do or when the possible number of outcomes are not presented in front of you actually then what will happen then this classical method is will lack its uh, uh, acceptance and will lack a, its practic practicability. Relative frequency method describes the ratio of successive chances to occur in total number of outcomes. Now we need to have, we need to know two areas. We need to know two um, particular uh, fields. One is that 
what are the successive chances what is the uh, domain that a successive outcome will be there or this particular event will occur exactly this is a successful successive chance and we should know the total number of outcomes meaning we should know the sample space the entire domain where the probability is lying and how many chances are there that one particular event will happen right so that is uh, equals to successive chances over total chances total um, outcomes s describes the successive and t describes the total number of outcomes which are uh, the probability of an event for example 100 consumers are there which are buying a product from total production of 400 a research has been conducted and research shows that uh, this particular product will be accepted in market so the production of 400 units was conducted successfully so 400 is actually the total number of production for one product which was researched from market and uh, the results were taken from research that uh, consumers are likely to buy this product but actually what happened that once this product was out for sales not 400 people buy that product because of multiple uncontrollable factors which we have discussed last in last lecture that there are so many other factors which change the consumers mind which change the consumers decision making approaches but actually what happens that 400 people won't have purchased the product out of 400 just 100 have purchased the product so the probability of event will be that 100 consumers have successfully purchased the product out of 400 so 0.25 is the result similar example can be reverted as well that 300 consumers have not purchased the product right the similar example has been reverted this is another event which happens so for this case that uh, out of 400 300 consumers have not purchased the product so this gives you another um, uh, kind of um, analysis which is point 0.75 when you combine the probabilities of both the events probability of event that consumers have purchased the product is 0.25 and probability of the second event that consumers have not purchased the product is 0.75 outcomes will be two because we have conducted two experiments we have conducted one experiment which generate two outcomes that whether they buy or they won't buy so those who have bought the product are 100 in number and those who have not bought the product were 300 in number both gives separate probabilities sum of both the probabilities is equals to 1 finally we get the right relative frequency method approach that if the kind of outcome is not for sure we have conducted research and uh, research has not generated the exact results which were actually implemented actually seen from the marketplace then we have analyzed that what is the probability of successive results what is the probability that product is purchased is 0.25 and what is the probability that product is not purchased is 0.75 when we combine them together we get the second law satisfied as well that uh, sum of probabilities is one and, um, and each of the event will uh, gives the outcome which is lying which lies in the range of 0 to 1 so when both the outcomes when both the laws are satisfied we have actually assigned the right uh, uh, probability to the experiment and this methodology is known as relative frequency method this is a step higher to the classical methodology then we talk about the subjective method now when we consider um, the classical method and the relative frequency method both of these techniques are more objective in nature as it is 
sh uh, seen in this slide as well that classical and relative frequency methods of assigning probabilities are objective meaning crux whether this will happen or this will not happen whether head will appear or head will not appear whether consumers buy the product or consumer will not buy the product there won't be any third chance a consumer ya to product kharidega ya wo product nahi kharidega iske darmiyan wali koi aur situation ho nahi sakti similarly agar hum ek head uh, agar hum ek coin toss karte hain to ya to head appear hoga ya tail appear hogi iske alawa aur koi possible outcome nahi ho sakta so if we are not focusing any possible uh, we are not focusing we are not thinking about anything which cannot happen we are we are known with the exact sample space we are known with the exact domain of prob probability occurrence then we are actually talking about the objectivity we are actually talking about the classical method and we are talking about the relative frequency method but in subjective method this is more um, you can say qualitative in nature in kind of data in kind of techniques which are not generating the numerical outcomes somehow or which are difficult to be applied in numerics or which applies some uh, which which um, adds some uh, human um, you can say cognition agar insaan apna dimag istemal karke apne uh, thinking abilities ko utilize karke koi ek decision leta hai और उसकी बेसिस के ऊपर फोरकास्ट uh, करता है उसकी बेसिस के ऊपर प्रोबेबिलिटी असाइन करता है तो उस केस में ऑब्जेक्टिविटी तो नहीं है लेकिन अगेन दिस इज अ मेथड अगेन दिस इज अ स्ट्रक्चर विच नीड टू बी कंसिडर्ड विच नीड टू बी कंसिडर्ड इन इट्स राइट अप्रोच ठीक है ना कि अगर uh, हमने क्वाइंट ऑस नहीं करना अगर हमने एक एक्सपेरिमेंट एक ऐसा एक्सपेरिमेंट कंडक्ट नहीं करना जिसके ऊपर हम एक सॉलिड रिजल्ट लेते हैं जिसकी हमें सैम्पल स्पेस नहीं पता लेकिन एक इंडिविजुअल अपने प्रीवियस एक्सपेरिमेंट अपने प्रीवियस एक्सपीरियंसेस की बेसिस के ऊपर या अपनी थिंकिंग कैपेसिटी की बेसिस के ऊपर या अपने कॉग्निशन की बेसिस के ऊपर एक ऐसा डिसीजन लेता है जो कि बहुत एक्यूरेट हो सकता है तो उस केस में जो डिसीजन है वो ऑब्जेक्टिव नहीं है बल्कि वो सब्जेक्टिव मैथड है प्रोबेबिलिटी असाइन करने का वेरी वेरी यू कैन से नोन एग्जाम्पल टू यू is the kind of uh, act which is used to uh, associate with the cricket matches that people used to play that this particular team has uh, played these much games from these and these kind of pitches from these and these quality of uh, uh, grounds with these and these team members or sometimes a, a, a kind of situation happens that we are predicting that if these people are opening uh, the match or if uh, this particular team is batting first or this particular team is uh, uh, bowling or fielding first so this much chances are lying for winning a game or for losing a game so that is something which is not based on any objective approach of of course but this is again based on a kind of experience which is subjective in nature so this becomes a kind of technique which is uh, rather more complex but has is what is there and has to be uh, known in the probability so this particular terminology is known as subjectivity or subjective method which involves the personal degree of belief meaning personal degree of uh, interacting in event that how much Uh, experience or previous uh, knowledge you are having for that particular event and on the basis of that you are analyzing something and you are predicting something so if you are predicting something you are actually talking about probability but not on the objective ob objective basis not on the uh, sound uh, um, you can say numerical quantities but on the basis of your own experience if you are describing something so this is subjective in nature a very profound a very very interesting method of Uh, assigning probabilities but how to assign probability in that we'll be discussing it different individuals looking at different experiment can provide equally good but different subjective probabilities now again some similar example has been mentioned now, i have um, uh, mentioned here that equally good if you're talking about people the people might give multiple kind of approaches for one event whether it happen or not but 
this particular uh, uh, statement or this particular decision might be based on a very very sound experiment or on a very very sound experience so this particular experience will actually be generated a good result equally good result but this result is not described in the sample space actually so this is based on the personal thinking and personal degree of uh, belief now we will be talking about some basic relationships of probability now something which is more interesting to know you must have um, a little background of sets theory of sets now what is a set a set is a structured combination of objects structured combination of objects in a given range for example if you talk about a so a can have 0 to 100 numbers a set structured this can be a case that a is equals to 100 to 0 this is increasing in number in nature and this is decreasing in nature but structured or you can say that a is equals to a b till z structured alphabetically arranged or you can say a is equals to a e o u i vowels structured and mentioned in the range so if we talk about a kind of um, structure of numerical um, outcomes or non-numerical as well we are talking about sets that if you're having a drawer maybe so how many objects are there in the drawer the number of objects placed in drawer is a set because they are placed in a given range of drawer something it's not coming out which is bahar behari nahi hai drawer se it is remain inside the drawer so if it is remain inside the drawer that is a set of these and these objects so this can be object this can be numerics but a set is a structured and um, it's a structured form of numerics now there exist multiple types of events agar hum jab hum probability ki baat karte hain तो उस प्रॉबिलिटी के केस में हमारे पास बहुत से ऐसे इवेंट्स होते हैं जिसमें हमें सैम्पल स्पेस को भी पता होता है और इवेंट को भी पता होता है लेकिन हम उसके अंदर से उसकी आउट ऑफ दैट सैम्पल स्पेस हम एनालाइज करना चाहते हैं कि इस पर्टिकुलर इवेंट की कितनी वेटेज है कितनी प्रॉबिलिटी है उस केस में प्रॉबिलिटी के में हमारे पास कुछ कम्प्लीम uh, um, कुछ कुछ रिलेशनशिप्स uh, हैं जिसको हम डिस्कस करते हैं विद रेफरेंस टू मल्टीपल एरियाज एक एरिया हमारा सेट थ्योरी है एंड दिस इज एक्चुअली द सेट थ्योरी फर्स्ट रिलेशनशिप इज द कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ एन इवेंट जिसको हम ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट सॉरी ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट के नाम से भी डिनोट करते हैं ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट दिस पर्टिकुलर एरिया व्हिच इज मेंशनड इन द ब्लू बैकग्राउंड इज एक्चुअली द सैंपल स्पेस दिस इज द एरिया which is the maximum output which can be seen uh, which can which is which are, which is the possible outcome of any event the maximum range or the domain of any probability in that domain an event occurs which is event a so what is the probability this, that this particular event will happen is known as complement of event a or complement of an event which is this which is described in the form of s minus a sample space includes all the elements right and a includes few elements from the sample space but has to be from the similar range so wo sare ke sare numbers jo ke sample space mein maujood hai aur ए में भी मौजूद है 
So that is something which describes the complement of A. Okay, for example, if we have S in the under number, 1 to 10. And in A, we have all even numbers, which are in the range of 10, for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. S minus A will be having all those numbers which are there in S, in set S, but not there in set A. So, S mein to maujood hai, meaning in blue portion to exist karte hai, lekin A mein exist nahin karte hai. Wo hai, sare odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. That is S minus A or A complement. Woh saare ke saare numbers. Agar hum is set ko ek plate samjhe. Sample ko ek plate samjhe. Or ek spoonful hum us plate mein se nikaal lete. To us spoon ke andar woh saare ke saare values a jayengi. Ya woh saara ka saara material a jayega. Jo ke us plate mein to exist karta hai. ठीक है, लेकिन अब वो स्पून में चला गया, तो अब वो उस प्लेट में एक्सिस्ट नहीं करता, तो हम डिस्कस करेंगे वो सारे के सारे नंबर्स ए कंप्लीमेंट के अंदर, जो के सेट ए में मौजूद नहीं है, लेकिन प्लेट में मौजूद है, मीनिंग एस में मौजूद है और ए में मौजूद नहीं है, सो व्हाट इस लेफ्ट इन द प्ल complement of an event. अगर हम probability निकालें उन numbers की या उस material की जो के हमारे पास मौजूद था samples में जो के हमारे पास मौजूद है A में और जो हमारे पास मौजूद है A complement में तो उन दोनों की probability should be equal to one, right? According to the law. अब इस केस में हमारे पास टोटल जो नंबर है, टोटल जो मटेरियल मौजूद है इस सैंपल स्पेस के अंदर, दिस इस टेन, टेन नंबर्स। ए के अंदर हमारे पास वन, टू, थ्री, फोर, फाइव नंबर्स हैं। वो जो भी नंबर्स हैं, हमने इसमें से पांच नंबर निकाल लिए हैं। तो इसका मतलब ये है कि प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ़ ए इज़ इक तो पांच चीजें उठाकर हम उस प्लेट में से हमने उस स्पून के अंदर डाल दिए। And this gives a probability five over ten। अगर हम probability एक complement की analyze करें, कि बाकी platter में कितनी चीजें रह गई हैं, this will be one three five seven nine one two three four five again five numbers। Probability which we have assigned is again five over ten। So one over two and one over two gives one so probability of a plus probability of a complement should be equals to one right so that is something which is uh, interesting to note and i hope that uh, the example of platter and spoonful of it is giving you the right context of that union and intersection again interesting thing when you're now this figure is a little bit you know uh, I couldn't draw it that properly but I hope now this will be more, more um, interesting to note now when you are uh, talking about union you are combining two sets in a way that overlapping elements should not be considered if you have two sets hai, और उनमें से आपने उनकी यूनियन लेनी है तो जितने भी ऑब्जेक्ट्स कंबाइन होते हैं आप उनको कंसीडर नहीं करेंगे या आप उनको एट वन कंसीडर करेंगे ठीक है फॉर एग्जांपल अगर आपके पास दो ड्रॉर्स हैं और दो ड्रॉर्स में मुख्तलिफ किस्म की चीजें हैं और आपने काउंट करनी है कि टोटल इसमें कितनी चीजें हैं तो अगर एक में दोनों ड्रॉर्स में सॉक्स के पेयर्स हैं और दोनों ड्रॉर्स में यू कैन से ग्लव्स के पेयर हैं तो आप ये कहेंगे कि इन दोनों ड्रॉर्स में ग्लव्स और सॉक्स हैं बजाय कि आप ये कहें 
कि ड्रॉर ए में सॉक्स और ग्लव्स और कैलकुलेटर है और ड्रॉ बी में सॉक्स और ग्लव्स और कैमरा है तो इसका ये मतलब है कि ग्लव्स और सॉक्स तो दोनों में है तो इन दोनों ड्रॉर्स में कितनी चीजें हैं ग्लव्स सॉक्स कैमरा और कैलकुलेटर यूनियन कॉम्बिनेशन कि इन दोनों ड्रॉर्स में कुल कितनी चीजें हैं तो हमारे पास चार चीजें मिलेंगी सॉक्स हैं ग्लव्स हैं कैमरा और कैलकुलेटर है तो सिमिलरली यूनियन में जो चीजें रिपीट हो रही हैं उसको हम एट वन कंसिडर करेंगे उसको हम रिपीटेडली कंसिडर नहीं करेंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर हमारे पास एक सेट है विच इज हैविंग वन टू टेन नंबर हमारे पास सेट बी है विच इज हैविंग वन थ्री फाइव सेवन नाइन इलेवन थर्टीन Now we are talking about A union B. के इन दोनों के अंदर इन दोनों सेट्स के अंदर यूनिटी कितनी है तो वी विल नॉट बी कंसिडरिंग वन टू थ्री थ्री फोर फाइव फाइव सिक्स सेवन सेवन नो बट वील बी टेकिंग दीज थ्री फाइव वन थ्री फाइव सेवन नाइन वन ऑल दो दे आर देयर इन सेट ए एज वेल but we are just counting them and we will be talking about that a union b will be describing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 13 because there is no 12 and there is no 14 right but there is 11 and there is 13 which is there in b so 1 to 13 is the कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ए अब जितनी चीजें इसमें हमारे पास कंबाइन हुई हुई थी जो मैंने इस शेडेड एरिया में शो कराने की कोशिश की है उसको हमने वन कंसिडर किया उसको हमने एक दफा कंसिडर किया वी हैव कंसिडर इट वंस इन केस ऑफ यूनियन इंटरसेक्शन के केस में व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट ए इंटरसेक्शन बी द अदर पोर्शन इंटरसेक्शन की बात करते हैं तो हम सिर्फ उन नंबर्स की बात करते हैं या उन ऑब्जेक्ट्स की बात करते हैं जो दोनों में कॉमन है जो दोनों सेट्स में कॉमन है ठीक है अब इन दोनों ड्रॉर्स के अंदर ग्लव्स भी हैं सॉक्स भी हैं लेकिन ड्रॉर वन में या ड्रॉर ए में कैलकुलेटर है और ड्रॉ बी में कैमरा है सो वी आर नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट कैमरा एंड कैलकुलेटर वी आर जस्ट कंसर्न विद ग्लास एंड सॉक्स के इन दोनों ड्रॉर्स में कौन कौन सी चीजें कॉमन है वन थ्री फाइव सेवन नाइन एंड दैट सेट बिकॉज टेन इज नॉट देर इन बी इलेवन इज नॉट देर इन ए थर्टीन इज नॉट देर इन ए एंड टू फोर सिक्स एट आर नॉट देर इन एन नॉट देर इन बी तो इन दोनों सेट्स के अंदर इन टोटेलिटी कितनी चीजें कॉमन है जितनी चीजें कॉमन है वो हमारे पास इंटरसेक्शन भी होगा और वो हमने शो किया है इस शेडेड एरिया के अंदर आई होप यूनियन इंटरसेक्शन क्लियर हो गया आपको जब हम प्रोबेबिलिटी की बात करते हैं तो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ या यहां पर हमारे पास दो चीजें और इंटरेस्टिंगली हमें पता लग सकती है हमारे पास यहां पर एस बी मैंशन है विच इज सैम्पल स्पेस ठीक है अगर हमने मालूम करना हो कि ए यूनियन बी के अंदर कितने एलिमेंट्स हैं अगर हम ए यूनियन बी को इस सैंपल्स में से इस सैंपल स्पेस में से निकाल लें तो व्हाट इज लेफ्ट विद अस विल बी नोन एज ए यूनियन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट एज सिमिलर टू ए टू द ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट विच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड बट इन केस ऑफ ए यूनियन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एस माइनस ए यूनियन बी के एस के अंदर से हम वो सारे के सारे नंबर निकाल देंगे जो कि ए यूनियन बी में शामिल है अब एस क्या है यहां तो हमें एस ही नहीं पता यहां तो हमें सेट ए पता है सेट बी पता है एस क्या होगा एस विल बी द कम्बिनेशन ऑफ सेट ए एंड बी विच इज वन टू थ्री सो ऑन अपन एलेवन एंड थर्टीन combination of all the numbers which are there available in all sets 
इज सैम्पल स्पेस अभी तो यहाँ पर हमारे पास दो सेट्स हैं जब हम वेन डायग्राम की बात करते हैं तो वहां पर हमारे पास मल्टीपल सेट्स भी हो सकते हैं वहां पर हमारे पास ए बी सी डी ई और मल्टीपल और सेट्स भी हो सकते हैं जिसके अंदर जो कि एक ही सैम्पल स्पेस के अंदर एग्जिस्ट करते हैं लेकिन जस्ट टू गिव्स यू एन आइडिया के यूनियन uh, होती क्या है इंटरसेक्शन होती क्या है और यूनियन uh, का कॉम्प्लीमेंट और इंटरसेक्शन का कॉम्प्लीमेंट क्या होता है गिवन यू वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल तो अगर हमारे पास दो किस्म के सेट मेंशन है तो उनका सैम्पल स्पेस उन दोनों सेट्स का कॉम्बिनेशन है वो सारे के सारे एलिमेंट्स वो सारे के सारे लेटर्स जो कि उन दोनों सेट्स पे मेंशन है उन दोनों को अगर हम कंबाइन कर लेते हैं तो हमारे पास यूनियन तो हमारे पास सैम्पल स्पेस का सेट बन जाएगा ए यूनियन बी वो एलिमेंट्स होंगे जो कि उन दोनों सेट्स में मौजूद है लेकिन हम रिपीटेड एलिमेंट्स को या रिपीटेड ऑब्जेक्ट्स को एक दफा काउंट करेंगे दो या तीन दफा अगर तीन सेट्स हैं तो दो या तीन दफा उनको काउंट नहीं करेंगे हम उनको एक दफा काउंट करेंगे सिमिलरली इंटरसेक्शन के अंदर हम वो एलिमेंट्स को काउंट करते हैं जिसके अंदर जो कि हमारे पास दोनों सेट्स में मौजूद है जो कि दोनों सेट्स में कॉमन है ठीक है उसको भी हम एक ही दफा मैंशन करेंगे तो जो शेडेड एरिया है वो हमें शो कर रहा है इंटरसेक्शन और जो रेस्ट ऑफ द एरिया है अगर हम इस शेडेड एरिया को निकाल दें तो जो बाकी का पोर्शन ए और बी सेट्स का बच जाएगा जहां पर आपको ए और बी मेंशन हुआ नजर आ रहा है वो एक्चुअली ए यूनियन बी का एरिया ठीक है अगर हमने कॉम्प्लीमेंट लेना है ए यूनियन बी का तो वो वो सारे लेटर्स होंगे जो कि एस में मौजूद हैं और ए यूनियन बी में मौजूद नहीं है ए यूनियन बी हमारे पास ये सेट है वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन थर्टीन अब इसके अंदर हमारे पास वो सारे के सारे नंबर्स मौजूद हैं जो कि हमारे पास एस में भी मौजूद हैं। तो यहां पर अगर हम एस में से ए यूनियन बी को माइनस करते हैं तो वी आर लेफ्ट विद एन एम सेट एक ऐसा सेट है जो कि खाली रह गया ए यूनियन बी के अंदर सारे के सारे नंबर्स मौजूद हैं ठीक है लेकिन कुछ केसेस में ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि हमारे पास यूजली ए यूनियन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट शुड गिव रिजल्ट विच इज एम टी सो दैट इज काइंड ऑफ एन एग्जाम सिमिलरली जब हम ए इंटरसेक्शन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट की बात करते हैं तो ए इंटरसेक्शन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट विल बी एस माइनस ए इंटरसेक्शन बी कि अगर हम सैंपल स्पेस के अंदर से वो वाले नंबर माइनस कर दें जो कि ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट बी के अंदर मौजूद है तो हमारे पास रिमेनिंग सेट कौन सा बचेगा वो हमारे पास ए एंड सेक्शन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट होगा इस एग्जाम्पल के अंदर वो सारे एलिमेंट्स जो कि हमारे पास ए एंड सेक्शन बी के अंदर मौजूद हैं वो हम निकाल दें अगर एस में से तो द रिमेनिंग एलिमेंट्स विल बी टू फोर सिक्स एट टेन इलेवन एंड थर्टीन दिस इज ए एंड सेक्शन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट वो सारे के सारे नंबर जो कि ए एंड सेक्शन बी में मौजूद हैं और उसको हमने निकाल दिया है सैंपल स्पेस में से वी हैव एक्सट्रैक्टेड दीज एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम द सैंपल स्पेस व्हाट इज लेफ्ट विद अस इज गिव्स द पिक्चर ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट सिमिलरली हम इनकी प्रोबेबिलिटीज भी लेते हैं हम प्रोबेबिलिटी भी लेते हैं जब अगर हम प्रीवियस स्लाइड को एक दफा दोबारा देखें तो हम हमें ये भी पता लगाना है कि क्या प्रॉबेबिलिटी है ए यूनियन बी की मीनिंग ए यूनियन बी के अंदर कुल कितने एलिमेंट्स एग्जिस्ट करते हैं तो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व तो ट्वेल्व ओवर टोटल नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स कितने हैं हमारे पास सैंपल स्पेस के अंदर दीज आर वन टू टेन टेन नंबर इलेवन एंड थर्टीन मीनिंग ट्वेल्व नंबर तो प्रॉबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए यूनियन बी इज इक्वल्स टू वन ठीक है अब प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी भी बिल्कुल इसी तरह से काउंट होगी कि कितने नंबर्स हमारे पास ए इंटरसेक्शन बी के अंदर मौजूद है वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सो फाइव विद रेफरेंस टू द टोटल नंबर ऑफ आउटकम्स विच आर देयर इन द सैंपल स्पेस विच आर ट्वेल्व वी आर एक्चुअली टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रोबेबिलिटी विच इज देयर फॉर ए इंटरसेक्शन बी तो प्रोबेबिलिटी फॉर ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इज फाइव ओवर ट्वेल्व सो दैट इज समथिंग विच इज डिस्क्राइब इन द एडिटिव लॉ This is described in the addition law of probability that probability of A union B is equals to probability of set A plus probability of set B. In me se ham minus kar denge probability A intersection B ki. ठीक है? अभी एक example है हम इसको shortly देखते हैं and then we'll be 
leaving this lecture and afterwards we'll be talking about multiplication and uh, uh, conditional probability let's look at the example of uh, additional uh, law additional law of probability now the law is this this is the law that probability of a union b is equals to probability of event a plus probability of event b minus probability of event a intersection b agar ek hamare uh, paas um, exam hai ek course hai hamare paas jiske andar 200 students registered hai out of these 200 students uh, 160 students ne pass kiya hai mid term exam aur 140 students ne pass kiya hai terminal exam ya final exam और 124 स्टूडेंट्स ने दोनों एग्जाम्स पास किए हैं तो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट कम्बिनेशन व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट समथिंग इन कॉमन वी टॉक अबाउट इंटरसेक्शन तो प्रोबेबिलिटी हमने इवेंट uh, ए जो हमारे पास है वो ये है कि वो सारे के सारे स्टूडेंट्स जो के पास हुए हैं मिड टर्म में दूसरा इवेंट हमारे पास ये है कि वो सारे स्टूडेंट्स जो के पास हुए हैं फाइनल एग्जाम्स में तो इस तरह से हमारे पास दो इवेंट्स आ गए हैं वो सारे स्टूडेंट्स जो के पास हुए हैं मिड टर्म एग्जाम्स में गिव्स अस 160 नंबर टोटल नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स 200 थे तो हमारे पास जो फ्रैक्शन आई है दिस इज 160 ओवर 200 व्हिच गिव्स 0.80 एज एज रिजल्ट सिमिलरली द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ बी इज 140 ओवर 200 मीनिंग 140 स्टूडेंट्स ने क्लियर uh, किया है फाइनल एग्जाम आउट ऑफ 200 व्हिच गिव्स अस द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ 0.70 A intersection B is uh, stands for those students who are there in 200 uh, group of students, but they have clear, they have uh, passed both the exams. When you talk about both the exams, meaning exam one is clear, exam two is clear, so 124 students have cleared both the exams. So 124 in the fraction of 200 results 0.62 is the probability. अगर हम इस लॉ के ऊपर ये सारी वैल्यूज अप्लाई करें तो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ए यूनियन बी केव एस पॉइंट एट जीरो प्लस पॉइंट सेवन जीरो माइनस पॉइंट सिक्स टू इज पॉइंट एट एट तो एडिटिव लॉ डिस्क्राइब करता है या लॉ ऑफ एडिशन ने हमें डिस्क्राइब किया है कि इस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम में इस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स में एटी यूनियन का मार्जिन है 88 परसेंट स्टूडेंट्स जो हैं वो सक्सेसफुली ये कोर्स क्लियर कर लेंगे तो दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच डिस्क्राइब्स द एडिटिव लॉ और लॉ ऑफ एडिशन सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द प्रोबेबिलिटी इट्स डेफिनेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड सैम्पल स्पेस दैट वॉट आर द एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड वॉट इज एक्चुअली दैम्पल स्पेस वी हैव डिस्कस दैट हाउ वी कैन असाइन मल्टीपल प्रोबेबिलिटीज to multiple experiments and multiple events we have discussed three methods for that for assigning probabilities one is the classical method second is the relative frequency method and third is the subjectivity approach or the subjectivity method then we have discussed the simple theory of sets of um, uh, complement of set sets union sets intersection and then the inter complement of union and inter intersection as well then we have discussed the addition law of probability and afterwards in next lecture we will uh, be inshallah talking about uh, the law of multiplication the conditional probability and the joint probability with few examples so that you can uh, uh, you can get cleared with the concept and then we'll be completing the chapter thank you so much see you in next lecture allah hafiz